The Sega Genesis helped define an era of gaming. It had an awesome library and was constantly getting upgrades and new features, both official and third party. Now, over 30 years later, the Genesis just got another upgrade that brings its audio and video output up to modern standards. I'd like to introduce you to the Sega Triple Bypass. Just stick it in your Genesis. Classic consoles like the Sega Genesis were designed to be played on the average CRT you'd find in people's homes in the 80s and 90s. Most people back then connected their consoles with RF, the little screw terminal on the back of the TV, and most of those TVs only had one mono speaker. As a result, console manufacturers didn't put much effort into getting the best quality output from these systems, and rightfully so. Adding just a dollar of cost to improve quality that most people couldn't take advantage of anyway would have lost the company millions, and it just didn't make sense at the time. Today is a totally different story though. Many people are connecting these consoles to 4K flat panels, or even leftover broadcast monitors that were far out of the price range of pretty much everybody back in the day. So now those details that didn't really matter at all suddenly become a very big deal. Each model of the Sega Genesis has its own quirks and issues as well. The Model 1 is generally known for having good quality audio output, however the video output is quite noisy. Alternatively, the Genesis 2 and 3 usually have decent video output, but some major audio issues. It's common to find Genesis 2s that output terrible sounding audio, and while the Genesis 3's audio is pretty good, it's only mono. Over the years there's been some projects and upgrades that helped repair each of these issues individually, but now there's one project that's been worked on by some of the smartest Sega enthusiasts on the planet that solves both the audio and video issue in one board. The Sega Triple Bypass, or 3BP for short. The board was originally designed and named by Rene from DB Electronics as it's a device that bypasses the audio, video, and DIN of the original Genesis 1. The Triple Bypass, if you will. The video circuit was designed by Rene originally and then checked by Steve from HD Retrovision. It allowed you to completely isolate the RGBS lines from the motherboard, meaning it won't pick up a lot of the same interference the original signal had. The video signal was shaped with the lowest tolerance components reasonably available, and both the C-Sync and composite video lines output the proper voltage for each line. As a note, you'll no longer get composite video output, but you can use an RGB cable that syncs on the composite video pin, such as the HD Retrovisions. The audio side of things is where it gets really interesting though. See, the original Triple Bypass had an audio circuit based off of Ace's Mega Amp, and while that was absolutely excellent, we wanted to get it as close to the original as possible, both for preservation purposes and for audio files that can detect that half a percent difference in audio levels. So we recruited Tian Feng to take over as the lead designer of the board layout, and a bunch of people helped for the audio side of things. Now, the video would be an hour long if I thanked everybody involved, but I definitely wanted to give some shout outs to Ace for coming back in and checking everything, Firebrand X, to Jose Cruz for doing all of these installations and making sure both the wire routing and helping with the board layout itself was done properly so the installations weren't too crazy. And of course, I have to thank Artemio and the MD Fourier team for that amazing analysis software that removed any subjective opinions. Now we were able to have an actual tool to measure to make sure that this version of the triple bypass is as good or better than every other version of the Genesis on both the audio and video side. So now I'd like to take a look at how it's installed in each different model Genesis. Just an overview, not a deep technical uh, installation video or anything like that, but I just want to show how it improves each of the models and what to expect. The Genesis Model 3 was released in 1998 by Majesco as a small, stripped down Genesis. It lacked an expansion port and had some compatibility issues, but audio and video output was generally good, except the audio was only mono. As a result, it gained a reputation of being a bad choice for Genesis fans, but I totally disagree. With a few mods, these consoles can perform really well. There's two different motherboard revisions that can be found on a Genesis 3, and the triple bypass can restore stereo audio, as well as Sega CD support via a ROM cart on both of them. Since the 3BP is designed to work with the Genesis 2 style output, it actually fits right over the pins on the bottom of the board. 
Installers need to remember to sever and isolate any existing connections to the DIN, but this makes installation easier overall since you don't need to run wires from the output side of the board. After the 3VP is attached, all inputs for audio and the RGBS video lines can be connected. On VA1s, you can even re-enable 32x, SMS, Game Genie, and Virtua Racing support. Unfortunately, on VA2 motherboards, you could only restore Virtua Racing and Game Genie, but it's still a cool bonus. I really love these little consoles. The fact that you could have an excellent quality signal using official Sega chips on a tiny little device just seems awesome to me. In fact, I'd call a triple bypass to Genesis 3 the perfect solution for someone who wants a small form factor way to play original Genesis carts. The Genesis Model 2 was released both as a way to cut costs from the original Genesis and to breathe new life into the console with a fresh design. Unfortunately, many different motherboard revisions can be found in the Genesis 2, and some have major issues. A few output terrible quality audio, and some have noisy video with colors that seem off. After installing the 3BP, you end up with audio levels that are now set properly, and the video as sharp as can be. Now I'd like to demonstrate the audio difference between a Genesis with one of the worst motherboard revisions out there versus a triple bypass Genesis. Now, I'm sure internet streaming compression is going to destroy this comparison, and it'll sound exactly the same if you're watching this on your cell phone, so I'll also leave links below for anybody that wants to download the waves and listen with headphones, because I think it's a pretty big difference, and especially if you imagine listening to this through your home stereo system. So check it out for yourself and see what you think. Like the Genesis 3, the triple bypass can be installed in the Genesis 2 by severing traces to the DIN and simply dropping the board over it. Motherboard revision VA4s really benefit from a top install for wiring issues though, but the 3BP's DIN output is clearly labeled, making it easy to connect the output sides. Regardless of installation method, adding the triple bypass to a Genesis 2 is something original hardware enthusiasts should definitely consider, since you can get a big upgrade in audio and a decent video upgrade as well. The Genesis Model 1 is my personal favorite revision of the Genesis, and with this installation you can see the triple part of the triple bypass, the DIN. See, all Genesis 1s shipped with a large 8-pin DIN that only included mono audio. That means you'd need custom cables to get stereo from the front headphone jack, and connecting to the 32X could be a pain. If you remove the RF box from inside the Genesis, you could mount a Genesis 2 style 9 pinned in upside down and solder it directly to the ground plane. Then the 3BP board drops right on top and everything else ends up being a perfect fit. Now you can just use that standard Genesis 2 SCART or HD Retrovision cable and get stereo audio right from the back. Even connecting the 32X is easier since you could connect it the same way you'd connect to Genesis 2. The 3BP kit is a perfect fit for the Genesis 1, but there's a bit more involved in this installation. See, Genesis 1 consoles have a ton of interference nicknamed jail bars that are easily spotted on both flat panels and CRTs. To make matters worse, a simple RGB bypass won't clear everything up. You'll need to add SMD capacitors in a few places on the motherboard to help clean up the signal. The end result is an image that's still got a tiny bit of interference, but a vast improvement over the stock output. The Genesis 1 can also get a slight upgrade from the audio output as well with the triple bypass, which might seem strange because the Genesis Model 1s, with the exception of one of the last revisions, are generally known to have excellent audio, 
But this isn't really about the amp or anything else. This is about moving those signals away from the noisy motherboard. So while the audio quality should be about the same, you'll probably get less buzz and less ground noise on it. And it might not be as noticeable with every version of the Model 1, but I've certainly tested versions where there was a loud buzz before and no buzz afterwards using the same shielded cables. So while it's not nearly as big of a difference as the bad Genesis Model 2s that needed the upgrade, it's still something that I would suggest doing. And if for nothing else, you get to replace aging components with brand new ones, and integrate the audio, the stereo audio, directly into the back DIN without ever needing the front headphone jack anymore. Also, there's installation instructions out there that allow you to keep the front headphone jack active, so if you're somebody that likes to game with headphones, you might actually get a small performance boost there as well using the triple bypass. Now, since the triple bypass is an open source project, people are encouraged to make their own versions, to tweak it, and to do pretty much anything they want. I've already heard of a few revisions of people replacing some of the capacitors with audiophile grade ones, which to be perfectly honest, I don't think unless you have really expensive headphones or speakers you'd ever be able to tell the difference, but that's the beauty of stuff like this. What if you do? What if you love audio and you have super sensitive ears and you're able to take that 1% or less than 1% of a difference and be able to hear it? Then now you'll have an option for making your own or collaborating with other people that could use whatever components you want. Also, there's other versions of the Sega Genesis that could benefit from some specific board model changes, and I think one of my favorite ones that was already released is the triple bypass for the Sega Nomad. The one installed in this was designed by Mobius Strip Tech and adds its own triple to the board. This bypassed the Nomad's audio, video, and even headphone amp circuit. The Nomad itself is still a bit noisy, but I'd definitely call this an upgrade over stock, especially when combined with a newer LCD screen. I'm really interested to see what other mods people come up with, and to see if there's other, rarer versions of the Genesis like the Wonder Mega or XI that could benefit from a triple bypass. With so many excellent ways of playing Sega Genesis games becoming available, some people will have a hard time justifying the cost and effort to modify an original console, and that's totally okay. Some people will prefer to keep their original consoles completely unmodified, and use something like the Analog Mega SG to play their original cartridges or even use a mister and its incredible dual output and adaptive blending to get a crystal clear signal through both RGB and HDMI. Just like how driving a classic car provides a different experience than driving a brand new one, playing original cartridges on original hardware provides a different experience as well. And if that's the experience that you're looking for, using a Sega Triple Bypass will get you the best audio and video quality that you could reasonably expect from any classic analog consoles. Thanks for watching, and I'd like to extend a special thanks to everyone who participated in the Triple Bypass project. Ideas like this could only happen as a result of dedicated members of the retro gaming community, and I'm proud to have been a part of the team. Also, if you liked this video and you'd like to see more projects like this get funded, please consider signing up for my support services such as Patreon and Floatplane, as it's your support that makes this stuff possible. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe, and check out the weekly podcast available every Wednesday that keeps everyone in the loop of everything going on in the retro gaming scene. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time.